Section 17 of Perfumes and Their Preparation. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Perfumes and Their Preparation by George William Askison. Chapter 15. Ammoniacal and Acid Perfumes. A. Ammoniacal Perfumes. Ammonia, ammonia water, has a disagreeable odor and exerts a very caustic effect on the lacrimal glands. Despite these properties, ammonia in a highly dilute condition and mixed with other aromatics finds manifold application in perfumery and serves particularly for the manufacture of the so-called smelling salts or inexhaustible salts used for filling smelling bottles. The liquid or caustic ammonia, however, is not so suitable for the purposes of the perfumer as the carbonate of ammonia which when pure forms colorless crystals usually covered with a white dust, consisting of bicarbonate of ammonia. These, undergoing gradual decomposition, give off the odor of ammonia, and hence are more lasting in smelling bottles than the pure liquid ammonia. The main essential for both of these substances is purity. Caustic ammonia, as well as carbonate of ammonia, are now obtained on a large scale from gas liquor but the crude products always retain some of the penetrating odor of coal tar, which renders them valueless for the purpose of the perfumer. We must therefore make it a rule to use nothing but perfectly pure materials which, moreover, are easily to be had in the market. Inexhaustible Salt Cell Inepuisable Oil of Bergamot, 24 grains Oil of Lavender, 45 grains Oil of Mace, 24 grains Oil of clove, 24 grains. Oil of rosemary, 45 grains. Water of ammonia, 1 quart. The aromatics are placed in a bottle. The ammonia is added and the bottle vigorously shaken. The solution is soon effected and the turbid liquid can be at once filled into bottles. According to the material from which the containers are made, different methods must be adopted. It is necessary to give the liquid such form as to prevent its flowing out when the vessel is inverted. This is important as the bottles are often carried in dress pockets and the ammonia destroys most colors. As a rule, the vessels are filled with indifferent porous substances which are moistened with the perfume. If the container is made of boxwood, ivory, porcelain, or some other opaque material, it is filled with fibers of asbestos or with very small pieces of sponge, and as much perfume is poured in as the substance can take up. The vessels are then inverted into a porcelain plate and allowed to drain, and are finally closed with a loose plug of cotton. If the container is transparent, it is better to use, instead of the asbestos or sponge which do not look neat, either small pieces of white pumice stone, powdered glass, small white glass beads, or crystals of sulfate of potassium, which is insoluble in the perfume. White Smelling Salt Cell Blanc Parfumé while the first name ammoniacal preparation is called a salt, it is really nothing but perfumed caustic ammonia. But white smelling salt is what its name indicates and can be perfumed as desired by the consumer. But as only certain scents harmonize with ammonia, not every odor can be employed. The most appropriate are oils whose odor resembles that of rose and the oils of nutmeg and cinnamon. Mix in a large porcelain jar. Carbonate of ammonia, two pounds caustic ammonia one pound, cover the jar and leave it at rest. After some days the mixture will have changed into a firm mass of monocarbonate of ammonia, which is rubbed to a coarse powder, perfumed and filled into bottles. The above quantities require oil of bergamot 15 grains, oil of lavender 15 grains, oil of nutmeg 8 grains, oil of clove 8 grains, oil of rose 8 grains, oil of cinnamon 75 grains. The oils are poured into a mortar and rubbed up with about one-tenth of the salt. Of this perfumed salt enough is added to the several portions of the mass, and triturated until the odor is equally distributed. For cheaper smelling salts, oils of geranium and cassia may be substituted for the oils of rose and cinnamon. Preston Salt Cell Volatile In this perfume, ammonia is continually generated. The salt is prepared by mixing chloride of ammonia or sal ammoniac in fine powder with freshly slaked lime. Fine or cheap perfume is added according to the grade desired. 
The mixture of sal ammoniac and slaked lime continually develops small amounts of ammonia. It takes a long time until the decomposition is complete, and for this reason a bottle filled with Preston salt retains the odor of ammonia for several years. Eau de Luce This is the only ammoniacal perfume used in a liquid form. It is made according to the following formula. Tincture of ambergris, ten and a half ounces. Tincture of benzoin, a half a pound. Oil of lavender, 150 grains. Water of ammonia, one and a half pounds. The tinctures are mixed with the ammonia by agitation and immediately filled into bottles. The liquid should have a milky appearance. At times, 150 grains of white soap is added, which aids in imparting to the liquid the desired milky appearance. In fine eau de luce, the odor of ambergris should predominate. This can be easily effected by increasing the amount of tincture of ambergris. B. Acid perfumes. As there is a group of perfumes which is distinguished by their characteristic odor of ammonia, and which we have therefore called ammoniacal, so there is an important series of articles containing acetic acid, which are used cosmetically as so-called toilet vinegars, and in some washes. Ordinary vinegar, i.e. water containing 4-6% to of acetic acid, has, as is well known, a not unpleasant refreshing odor and a pure acid taste. Pure acetic acid, now made in large quantities and of excellent quality, is known commercially as glacial acetic acid. In commerce, it is customary to designate any acetic acid containing 85 or more percent of the absolute acid as glacial acetic acid. In chemical or pharmacopial nomenclature, however, the glacial acid is meant to be as near 100% as possible. In perfumery, an 85% acid is sufficiently strong. It forms a colorless liquid with a narcotic odor and an intensely acid taste. It congeals into glassy crystals at a temperature of 8.5 degrees centigrade, 47 degrees Fahrenheit. The latter property is of importance as showing the purity of the acid. Concentrated acetic acid, like alcohol, dissolves aromatic substances, with which it forms perfumes which differ from those made with alcohol, mainly by their peculiar refreshing after-odor, which is due to the acetic acid. Acetic acid can be saturated with various odors and thus furnish fine perfumes, but for so-called toilet vinegars, which are used as washes, the acetic acid must be properly diluted. Since the concentrated acid has pronounced caustic properties, reddens the skin, and may even produce destructive effects on sensitive parts such as the lips. Aromatic Vinegar Vinaigre Aromatique Glacial Acetic Acid, 2 pounds Camphor, 4 and a quarter ounces Oil of Lavender, 3 quarters of an ounce Oil of Mace, 150 grains Oil of Rosemary, 150 grains Instead of the perfumes here given, finer odors may be employed for the production of superior toilet vinegars. Thus we find vinaigre ambre, a musque, a la violette, a jasmine, etc., according to the perfume used. As concentrated acetic acid dissolves most aromatic substances the same as alcohol, all alcoholic perfumes may have their counterparts in acetic acid. But the aromatics should never be added in so large amount as to mask the characteristic odor of the acetic acid. A very pleasant vinegar may be produced by combining an alcoholic with an acid perfume as in the following. Spiced Vinegar Vinaigre a Epices 1. Macerate leaves of geranium, lavender, peppermint, rosemary, and sage, of each, one ounce. In alcohol of 80%, one pound. 2. Macerate angelica root, calamus root, camphor, mace, nutmeg, cloves, of each, one half ounce in glacial acetic acid, two pounds. For two weeks mix the liquids and filter them into a bottle which should not be completely filled. The longer this mixture is allowed to season in the bottle, the finer will be the aroma, for in the course of time the alcohol and acetic acid react on each other and form acetic ether, which likewise possesses a pleasant aromatic odor. Certain aromatic vinegars, like ammoniacal perfumes, are filled into smelling bottles containing the same porous substances for their absorption namely sponge, pumice stone, crystals of potassium sulfate, etc. Formulas for Toilet Vinegars Vinaigre a la Rose Essence of Rose, triple, ten and a half ounces White Wine Vinegar, one quart 
This should be colored a pale rose tint with one of the dye stuffs to be enumerated hereafter. The use of true wine vinegar is to be recommended for this and all the following toilet vinegars, as the enanthic ether it contains has a favorable effect on the fineness of the odor. Vinaigre aux fleurs d'oranges. Extract of orange flower, 7 ounces. White wine vinegar, 1 quart. This is usually left colorless. Vinaigre aux violettes. Extract of cassie, 8 ounces. Extract of orange flower, 3.5 ounces. Tincture of orris root, 5.5 ounces. Essence of rose, triple, 5.5 ounces. White wine vinegar, 1 quart. Vinaigre de quatre velours. Leaves of lavender, peppermint, rue, rosemary, and cinnamon, of each 3.25 ounces. Calamus, mace, nutmeg, of each 150 grains. Camphor, 3 quarters of an ounce. Macerated in alcohol, 7 ounces. And acetic acid, 4 and 3 quarter pounds. Preventive vinegar. Vinaigre hygienique. Benzoin, 2 and a quarter ounces. Lavender, 3 quarters of an ounce. Cloves, 150 grains. Marjoram, 3 quarters of an ounce. Cinnamon, 150 grains. Alcohol, 1 quart. White wine vinegar, 2 quarts. Macerate the solids with the alcohol and vinegar. Vinaigre de Cologne. Cologne water, 1 quart. Glacial acetic acid, 1 and 3 quarter ounces. As this vinegar is made by mixing an alcoholic perfume with acetic acid, so all other alcoholic perfumes may be employed for a like purpose. But the quantities must be determined by experiment for the various aromatics differ in the intensity of their odor. Vinaigre Ethere. Glacial acetic acid, 14 ounces. Acetic ether, 1 and a half ounces. Nitrous ether, 3 quarters of an ounce. Water, 5 quarts. The water should be added after the ethers have been dissolved in the glacial acetic acid. Vinaigre de Levande. Lavender water, 4 quarts. Rose water, 1 pint. Glacial acetic acid, a half pound. To be stained a bluish color with indigo carmine. Orange flower vinegar. Orange flower water, 4 quarts. Glacial acetic acid, 7 ounces. Mallard's toilet vinegar. Tincture of benzoin, 1 and a half ounces. Tincture of tolu. 1.5 ounces, oil of bergamot, 150 grains, oil of lemon, 150 grains, oil of neroli, 30 grains, oil of orange peel, 1.5 ounce, oil of lavender, 15 grains, oil of rosemary, 15 grains, tincture of musk, 15 grains, concentrated acetic acid, 21 ounces, alcohol, 4 and 3 quarter pounds. Toilet vinegar, French formula. Oil of bergamot, 30 grains. Oil of lemon, 30 grains. Oil of rose, 8 drops. Oil of neroli, 5 drops. Benzoin, 75 grains. Vanillin, 15 grains. Concentrated acetic acid, a half ounce. Alcohol, a half pound. Macerate for two weeks and filter. Vinaigre polyantha. Glacial acetic acid, 7 ounces. Tincture of benzoin, 1 and 3 quarter ounces. Tincture of tolu, 1 and 3 quarter ounces. Oil of neroli, 150 grains. Oil of geranium, 150 grains. Water, 2 quarts. To be stained with tincture of cremaria. Rotine. End of section 17. Recording by Philip Gould. Section 18 of Perfumes and Their Preparation. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Perfumes and Their Preparation by George William Askison. Chapter 16. Dry Perfumes. As a matter of course, dry perfumes are of greater antiquity than fluid. Aromatic substances require merely to be dried in order to retain their fragrance permanently. The oldest civilized people known in history, Egyptians, Assyrians, Persians, Babylonians, and the Jews, as numerous passages in the Bible prove, used dried portions of plants, leaves, flowers, and rosins as perfumes and incense. To this day there is kept up quite a trade in Valeriana Celtica, a strong-scented alpine plant and in powdered amber with the Orient, where they are used for scent bags and incense respectively. The Catholic Church retains to the present time the Jewish rite of burning incense, and in our museums will be found urns taken from Egyptian graves, from which pleasant odors escape even now after nearly 4,000 years, 
owing to the aromatic rosins with which they are filled. It is said, too, that the delightful volatile odors of our handkerchief perfumes were first prepared by an Italian named Frangipani, conceiving the idea of treating a dry mixture of different aromatic plants with alcohol, and thus imparting the odor they contain to the latter. Not all aromatics can be made into sachet powders. It is well known that the delightful odor of violets changes into a positively disagreeable smell when the flowers are dried, and the same remark applies to the blossoms of the lily of the valley, mignonette, lily, and most of our fragrant plants. On the other hand, some portions of plants, especially those in which the odorous principle is contained not only in the flower, but in all parts of the plant, as in the mints, sage, and most labiatae, remain fragrant for a long time after drawing, and hence can be employed for sachets. Besides the plants named, lavender, rose leaves, the leaves of the lemon and orange tree, acacia farnesiana, patchouli herb, and some other plants continue fragrant after drying. Any vegetable substance to be used for sachets must be completely dried so as to prevent mold. The drying should be effected in a warm, shady place, sometimes in heated chambers, Direct sunlight and excessive heat injure the strength of the odor. A portion of the aromatics becomes rosinified and volatilized. If artificial heat is employed at temperature between 40 and 45 degrees centigrade, 104 to 113 degrees Fahrenheit is most suitable. The external form of this class of preparations varies, of course, with the public for which it is intended. Expensive sachets are sold in silk bags with different ornamentation. Those intended for the Orient are generally put up as small silk cushions richly ornamented with gold and colors to suit Oriental taste. Cheap sachets are sold in envelopes or in round boxes. It is customary to have the ingredients ground or finely powdered, for which purpose small hand mills will generally suffice. End of section 18. Recording by Philip Gould. Section 19 of Perfumes and Their Preparation. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by April Walters. Perfumes and Their Preparation by George William Askinson. Chapter 17. Formulas for Dry Perfumes or Sachets. Ceylon Sachet Powder mace 23 ounces patchouli 28 ounces vetiver root 35 ounces oil of orange peel one and three quarters ounces oil of peppermint three and a half ounces cyprian sachet powder cedar wood two pounds rhodium two pounds sandalwood two pounds oil of rhodium one half ounce the oil is mixed with the finely powdered or rasped woods and distributed in the mass by trituration. Field flower sachet powder, calamus root, one pound, caraway, one half pound, lavender, one pound, marjoram, one half pound, musk, thirty grains, cloves, two and three quarter ounces, peppermint, one half pound, rose leaves, one pound, Rosemary, three and a half ounces. Thyme, one half pound. Frangipani sachet powder. Musk, one ounce. Sage, one half pound. Sandalwood, one half pound. Orris root, six pounds. Vetiver, one half pound. Civet, one quarter ounce. Oil of neroli, seventy five grains. Oil of santal, seventy five grains. Oil of rhodium, 75 grains. Heliotrope sachet powder. Musk, 1 half ounce. Rose leaves, 2 pounds. Tonka beans, 1 pound. Vanilla, 1 half pound. Orris root, 4 pounds. Oil of bitter almond, 30 grains. Indian sachet powder. Sandalwood, 3 and 1 half ounces. Orris root, 21 ounces. Cinnamon, 10 and 1 half ounces. Oil of lavender, 75 grains. Cloves, 30 grains. Oil of rose, 150 grains. 
lavender sachet powder benzoin one pound lavender flowers four pounds oil of lavender one ounce oil of rose 75 grains marshall sachet powder cassia one half pound musk 75 grains cloves one half pound rose leaves one half pound sandalwood one pound orris root one pound mi fleur sachet powder benzoin one pound lavender one pound musk 30 grains cloves four and a half ounces allspice two and a half ounces rose leaves one pound sandalwood four and a quarter ounces tonka beans four and a quarter ounces vanilla four and a half ounces orris root one pound civet 30 grains cinnamon one half ounce muslin sachet powder benzoin one half pound sandalwood one pound thyme one pound orris root one pound vetiver root two pounds oil of geranium 75 grains olla podrida this name is applied in spain to a dish prepared from various remnants of food the olla podrida of the perfumer is made from the remnants of the aromatic vegetable substances after their extraction with alcohol petroleum ether etc although vanilla cinnamon nutmeg etc be repeatedly extracted they still retain their characteristic odor though somewhat fainter and thus they can be used with advantage for sachet powders intended for filling bags cushions etc if mixed in a corresponding proportions they can be made for all of the sachets here enumerated no definite formula can be given for peculiar dry perfume to be called olla podrida the olfactory organ is the best guide patchouli powder patchouli herb two pounds oil of patchouli thirty grains musk fifteen grains the musk is rubbed up with gradually increased quantities of the patchouli herb and with the addition of the oil of patchouli the intimate mixture of the powder saturated with musk and oil of patchouli and the rest of the powder is effected by prolonged stirring of the two powders in a large vessel the same process is followed with all other dry powders in which a small amount of a solid with intense odor or of an essential oil is to be mixed with a large quantity of powder persian sachet powder musk thirty grains rose leaves one pound tonka beans three and one half ounces orris root two pounds oil of nutmeg seventy five grains oil of clove seventy five grains oil of rose one hundred fifty grains oil of cinnamon seventy five grains portugal powder lemon peels one pound orange peels two pounds orris root one pound cinnamon three and a half ounces oil of lemongrass 150 grains oil of neroli 150 grains oil of orange peel two and a half ounces potpourri many widely differing perfumes are sold in the market under this name a good formula for its preparation is the following lavender one pound cloves two and a half ounces allspice two and a half ounces rose leaves one pound reseda one and three quarter ounces orris root one half pound vanilla one hundred fifty grains cinnamon one and three quarter ounces sand or table salt etc one pound the admixture of fine white sand table salt or powdered glass or marble etc is made merely for the purpose of increasing the weight rose sachet powder a geranium herb three and one half ounces rose leaves two pounds sandalwood one pound oil of rose one half ounce rose sachet powder b rose leaves two pounds sandalwood one pound oil of rose one ounce sandal powder which is simply finely rasped sandal wood is also sometimes sold as rose sachet powder when it has received an addition of some oil of geranium violet sachet powder benzoin one half pound musk thirty grains orange flowers one and three quarter ounces rose leaves one pound orris root 
two pounds oil of bitter almond 75 grains oil of lemongrass 30 grains violet sachet powder orris root powdered one pound musk eight grains vanillin 30 grains oil of rose 25 drops oil of petite grain 150 grains cologne water three and a half ounces mix intimately in a porcelain mortar verbena sachet powder lemon peels one pound caraway one half pound orange peels one pound oil of bergamot one and three quarter ounces oil of lemon one and three quarter ounces oil of lemongrass 75 grains vetiver sachet powder vetiver root two pounds musk 15 grains civet 20 grains end of section 19 recording by april walters aprilwalters.com section 20 of perfumes and their preparation this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by annie rue perfumes and their preparation by george william askinson chapter 18 the perfumes used for fumigation according to the use made of them perfumes for fumigation may be divided into two groups those which develop their fragrance on being burned and those which do so on merely being heated the former group includes pastilles and ribbons the latter fumigating powders and waters fumigating pastilles french pastille fumigatoire german rochenskin pastilles consist in the main of charcoal to which enough saltpetre has added to make the lighted mass glow continuously and leave a pure white ash to this mass are added various aromatic substances which are gradually volatilized by the heat and fill the surrounding air with their perfume it is important to observe that only ordinary saltpetre nitrate potassium is to be used for this purpose and not the so-called chili saltpetre nitrate or sodium which becomes moist in the air for ordinary pastilles finely rasped fragrant woods such as cedar or santal are frequently employed during the slow combustion however the wood gives off products of a pungent or disagreeable odor such as acidic acid and impyromatic products which lessen the fragrance fine pastilles are composed of resins and essential oils and are usually formed into cones two-fifths to four-fifths of an inch high by being pressed into metal molds fumigating pastilles are manufactured as follows each solid ingredient is finely powdered by itself and the necessary quantities are then put into a wide porcelain dish and intimately mixed with the flat spatula in order to confine the dust the dish is covered with a cloth during the operation the mixture being completed the essential oils are added together with enough mucilage of acacia to form a plastic mass to be kneaded with the pestle and which after drying will have sufficiently firm consistence pastille orientale charcoal one and a half pounds saltpetre three and a half ounces benzoin one half pound powdered amber three and a half ounces tolu balsam two and three quarter ounces the charcoal for this and all other pastilles should be made from soft woods willow poplar etc the characteristic of these pastilles is the amber they contain offal from manufactories is used and which on ignition gives off a peculiar odor prized in the orient rather than in europe or america pastilla du serai charcoal one and a half pounds saltpeter three and a half ounces benzoin one half pound santal wood five and a half ounces opium one and three quarter ounces tolu balsam two and three quarters ounce this formula is here given as usually quoted it may be stated however that the opium may be admitted entirely as it neither contributes to the fragrance nor produces by being burned in this manner any of the supposed exhilarating or intoxicating effects which it may produce when used in other forms or employed in other ways baguette encessoire 
fumigating pencils benzoin fourteen ounces charcoal one and three quarters ounce peru balsam one ounce storax two ounces shellac three and a half ounces olibanum five and a half ounces civet seventy five grains oil of bergamot one ounce oil of orange peel one ounce oil of santal three quarters ounce melt the benzoin charcoal shellac and olibanum in a bright iron pan at the lowest possible heat take the pan from the fire and add the other ingredients heat again being applied from time to time to keep the mass in a liquid state the plastic mass is rolled out on a marble slab into rods the thickness of a lead pencil such a pencil need but lightly passed over a hot surface to volatize the aromatics it contains pastille odoferante charcoal two pounds saltpeter three and a half ounces benzoin one and a half pounds cloves seven ounces tolu balsam seven ounces vanilla seven ounces vetiver root seven ounces cinnamon three and a half ounces oil of neroli one hundred fifty grains oil of santal three quarter ounce this and the following formula give the finest mixtures for pastilles pastille embalmé charcoal two pounds saltpetre two and three quarters ounce benzoid acid sublimed one pound musk fifteen grains civet fifteen grains oil of lemongrass thirty grains oil of lavender fifteen grains oil of clove fifteen grains oil of thyme thirty grains oil of cinnamon thirty grains poudre d'encens incense powder benzoin one half pound cascaria one half pounds musk fifteen grains sandalwood one pound saltpeter three and a half ounces vetiver root five and a half ounces olibanum one pound cinnamon five and a half ounces dissolve the saltpeter in water saturate the powders with the solution dry the mass and again reduce it to powder the powder strewn on a warm surface such as the top of a stove takes fire spontaneously and gradually disappears fumigating papers and wicks bruges ribbons french papier à fumigation robin rouge german roche papier rocher bande fumigating papers are strips impregnated with substances which become fragrant on being heated such a strip need merely be placed on a stove or held over a flame in order to perfume the whole room fumigating papers are divided into two groups those meant to be burned and those meant to be used repeatedly the former before being treated with aromatics are dipped into saltpeter solution the latter in order to render them incombustible are first dipped into a hot alum solution so that they are only charred by a strong heat but not entirely consumed a inflammable fumigating paper papier fumigatoire inflammable the paper is dipped into a solution of three and a half to five and a half ounces of saltpeter in water after drying it is immersed in a strong tincture of benzoin or alabanum and dried again an excellent paper is made according to the following formula benzoin five and a half ounces sandalwood three and a half ounces olibanum three and a half ounces oil of lemongrass one hundred and fifty grains essence of vetiver one and three quarter ounce alcohol one quart for use the paper is touched with a red-hot substance not flame it begins to glow at once without bursting into flame giving off numerous sparks and a pleasant odor b non-flammable fumigating paper papier fumigatoire parminante this paper is prepared by dipping it in a hot solution of three and a half ounces of alum in one quart of water after drying it is saturated with the following mixture benzoin seven ounces tolu balsam seven ounces tincture of tonka seven ounces essence of vetiver seven ounces alcohol twenty fluid ounces this paper when heated diffuses a very pleasant odor and can be used repeatedly it does not burn and strong heat only chars it some manufacturers make inferior fumigating papers by dipping the alum paper simply in melted benzoin or olibanum 
c fumigating ribbons are nothing but fine flat lamp wicks treated first with saltpetre solution and then with the preceding mixture the wick is rolled up and placed in a vessel provided with a lamp burner it is inserted in the burner like any other wick and when lighted burns down to the metal and goes out unless screwed up higher fumigating vessels are provided with these wicks are very practical because if artistic in form they form quite an ornament to the room and can be instantly set in operation a french formula gives the following mixture for saturating the wicks benzoin one pound musk three quarter ounce myrrh three and a half ounce tolu balsam three and a half ounce tincture of orris root one pint oil of rose fifteen grains fumigating waters and vinegars eau encessoir vinaigre encessoir these fluids are nothing but strong solutions of various aromatics in alcohol a few drops of which suffice if evaporated on a warm plate to perfume a large room the following is a good formula for fumigating water benzoin seven ounces cascaria three and a half ounces cardamoms three and a half ounces mace one and three quarters ounce musk one hundred fifty grains peru balsam one and three quarters ounce storax one three quarters ounce tolu balsam one three quarters ounce olibanum three and a half ounces orris root fourteen ounces civet one hundred fifty grains cinnamon seven ounces oil of bergamot one and a half ounces oil of lemon one and a half ounces oil of geranium three quarters ounce oil of lavender three quarters ounce oil of neroli one hundred fifty grains alcohol two quarts of course this liquid must be filtered after prolonged maceration by adding it to one and a half ounces of glacial acetic acid we obtain the so-called fumigating vinegar which is useful for expelling bad odors fumigating powders poudre en ce soir these powders which need only to be heated in order to diffuse one of the most pleasant odors are easily prepared by intimately mixing the ground solids with the oils by means of a spatula we add three renowned formulas for the manufacture of such powders a poudre imperiale benzoin three and a half ounces cascarilla one and three quarters ounce lavender one and three quarters ounce rose leaves one and three quarters ounce santal wood one and three quarters ounce olibanum three and a half ounces orris root three and a half ounces cinnamon one and three quarters ounce oil of lemon seventy five grains oil of clove thirty grains oil of patchouli fifteen grains b poudre de la reine benzoin seven ounces cedar wood one pound cinnamon fourteen ounces lavender ten and a half ounces rose leaves ten and a half ounces patchouli herb three and a half ounces vetiver root three and a half ounces civet one hundred fifty grains oil of bergamot three quarters ounce oil of lemon three quarters ounce oil of neroli one hundred fifty grains oil of clove one hundred fifty grains c poudre royale cinnamon one half pound cloves one half pound orris root twelve and a half ounces storax twelve and a half ounces lavender one pound oil of clove three eighths ounce oil of lavender three eighths ounce oil of bergamot three eighths ounce oil of lemon three eighths ounce appendix some specialties besides the preparations enumerated in the preceding pages we find in perfumery some products which are in favor on account of their fragrance and are suitable for scenting ladies writing desks sewing baskets boxes and similar objects they find their most appropriate use in places where aromatic odor is desired while there is no room for keeping the substances themselves these must therefore be put into a small compass and the aromatics chosen should be distinguished by great intensity and permanence of odor 
we subjoin a few formulas for the manufacture of such specialties and add the remark that besides the aromatics they are given other substances may be used in their preparation but that the presence of benzoin musk or civet even in small amount is always necessary since these substances as above stated not only possess an intense and permanent odor but have the valuable property of imparting lasting qualities to more volatile odors it is a good plan too to keep on hand two kinds of these specialties one containing musk the other none for the reason that the musk odor is as disagreeable to some persons as it is pleasant to others spanish skin peau de spagna spanish leder the article sold under this name resembles in some respects sachets or scent bags and is made as follows take a piece of wash leather chamois trim it to a square shape and leave it for three or four days in the following mixture benzoin one half pound oil of bergamot three quarters ounce oil of lemon three quarters ounce oil of lemon grass three quarters ounce oil of lavender three quarters ounce oil of nutmeg one hundred fifty grains oil of clove one hundred fifty grains oil of neroli one and a half ounce oil of rose one and a half ounce oil of santal one and a half ounce tincture of tonka three quarters ounce oil of cinnamon one hundred fifty grains alcohol one quart at the end of the time named remove the leather from the liquid let it drain spread it on a glass plate and when dry coat it on the rough side by means of a brush with a paste prepared in a mortar from the following ingredients benzoic acid sublimed one hundred fifty grains musk fifteen grains civet fifteen grains gum acacia one ounce glycerin three quarters ounce water one and three quarters ounce the leather is then folded in the center smoothed with a paper knife put under a weight and allowed to dry the dried leather forms the so-called perfume skin which retains its fine odor for years instead of the above alcoholic liquids any desired alcoholic perfume may be used especially suitable are those containing oils of lemongrass lavender and rose since they are not very volatile and when combined with musk and civet remain fragrant for a long time a sufficiently large piece of perfume skin inserted in a desk pad or placed among the paper will make the latter very fragrant spanish skin is chiefly used for this purpose as well as for work glove and handkerchief boxes it is generally enclosed in heavy silk cover if leather be thought too expensive four to six layers of blotting paper may be perfumed in the same way and properly enclosed thin layers of cotton wadding between paper can also thus perfumed and used for filling pincushions etc spanish paste mix the following substances intimately in a porcelain mortar and add water drop by drop until a doughy mass results ambergris three quarters ounce benzoin one and a half ounce musk three quarters ounce vanilla three quarters ounce orris root three quarters ounce cinnamon three quarters ounce oil of bergamot one and a half ounces oil of rose three quarters ounce gum acacia one and a half ounce glycerin one and a half ounce this paste divided into pieces about the size of a hazelnut is used for filling the so-called cassolette or scent boxes which are carried in the pocket etc like smelling bottles owing to its pasty consistence this preparation can be used for perfuming jewelry small quantities are inserted within the diamond settings fine leather goods belts and other articles it is unnecessary to lengthen the list every practical perfumer will know what objects need perfuming End of section 20section twenty one of perfumes and their preparation this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org perfumes and their preparation by george william askison chapter twenty one hygienic and cosmetic perfumery perfumery is not merely called upon to act as an aesthetic direction and gladden the senses it has another and more important aim 
that is to aid in some respects the practice of medicine it is not necessary to point out that in this sense too it acts in an ascetic way for health and beauty are one and inseparable the field relegated to perfumery with reference to hygiene is extensive comprising the care of the skin the hair and the mouth but we also find in commercial perfumery articles which possess no medicinal effect and serve merely for beautifying some parts of the body for instance paints and hair dyes as it is not possible to separate perfumes with hygienic effects from cosmetics we shall describe the latter in connection with the former to repeat hygienic perfumery has to deal with such substances as have really a favourable effect on health no one will deny that soap takes the first place among them soap promotes cleanliness and cleanliness in itself is essential to health but it would exceed the scope of this work were we to treat in detail of the manufacture of soap and its employment in the toilet we must confine ourselves to some specialities exclusively made by perfumers and into the composition of which soap enters we do so the more readily since perfumers are but rarely in a position to make soap and in most cases find it more advantageous to buy the raw material that is ordinary good soap from the manufacturer and to perfume it next to soap in hygienic perfumery stands the so-called emulsions and creams or creme which are excellent preparations for the skin and pertain to the domain of the perfumer the human skin consists of three distinct parts the deepest layer the subcutaneous cellular tissue which gradually changes into true skin the corium or true skin the thickest layer and the superficial scarf skin or epidermis which is very thin and consists largely of dead and dying cells these are continually shed and steadily reproduced from the corium the skin contains various depressions namely the sudoriparous glands which excrete sweat the sebaceous glands which serve the purpose of covering the skin with fat and thereby keep it soft glossy and supple and lastly the hair follicles which contain the hairs an appendage to the skin the main object of hygienic perfumery with reference to the skin is to keep these glandular organs in health and activity it effects this by various remedies which besides promoting the general health improve the appearance of the skin as a special group of preparations is intended exclusively for the care of the skin so another class is devoted to the preservation of the hair and still another to the care of the mouth and its greatest ornament the teeth accordingly the preparations belonging under this head will be divided into three groups those for the skin the hair and the mouth end of section twenty one Section 22 of Perfumes and Their Preparation This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Robert Ray Perfumes and Their Preparation by George William Askinson Preparations for the Care of the Skin Glycerin Pure glycerin is a substance that has a powerful beautifying effect on the skin, by rendering it white, supple, soft and glossy. No other remedy will clear a sunburnt skin in so short a time as glycerin. An excellent wash may be made by the perfumer by mixing equal parts of thick colourless glycerin and orange flower water, or some other aromatic water with fine odour, possibly giving it a rose colour by the addition of a very small amount of fuchsine. Concentrated glycerin must not be used as a wash, because it abstracts water from the skin, and thereby produces a sensation of heat or burning. Besides common soap, the so-called emulsions, meals, pastes, vegetable milks and creams are the best preparations for the care of the skin. In perfumery, they are even preferable to soap, in some respects because they contain not only substances which have a cleansing effect like any soap scented or not but at the same time render the skin clearer 
more transparent and more supple. Emulsions Many perfumers make a definite distinction between two groups of emulsions which they call respectively emulsions and true emulsions. By emulsions they mean masses which have the property of changing on contact with water into a milky fluid or becoming emulsified. The term true emulsions is applied to such preparations as already contain a sufficient amount of water and therefore have a milky appearance. Hence, the difference between the two preparations lies in the lesser or greater quantity of water and is so variable that we prefer to describe them under one head. The cause of the milky appearance of the emulsions on coming in contact with water is that they contain, besides fat, substances which possess the property of keeping the fat suspended in form of exceedingly minute droplets, which make the entire fluid look like milk. As a glance through the microscope shows, the milk of animals consists of a clear fluid in which the divided fat droplets, butter, float. These, by their refractive power, make the milk appear white. While soaps always contain a certain quantity of free alkali, a substance having active caustic properties, emulsions include very little if any alkali, and since they possess the same cleansing power as soap without its disadvantages with reference to the skin, their steady use produces a warm youthful complexion as well as smoothness and delicacy of the skin. Glycerin is of special importance in the composition of emulsions. Besides the above-mentioned property of this substance of keeping the skin soft and supple, it acts as a true cosmetic by its solvent power of colouring matters. A skin deeply browned by exposure to the sun is most rapidly whitened by the use of glycerin alone. Moreover, glycerin prevents the decomposition of the preparations and keeps them unchanged for a long time. This quality has a value which should not be underestimated. For all emulsions are very apt to decompose and become rancid owing to the finely divided fat they contain. Under ordinary conditions, only complete protection against light and air can retard rancidity, which is accompanied by a disagreeable odour, not to be masked by any perfume. An addition of glycerin, which we incorporate in all emulsions, makes them more permanent, owing to the antiseptic property of this substance. Recent years, however, have made us acquainted with a substance which in very minute quantities, one half of one percent of the mass to be preserved by it, prevents decomposition and rancidity of fats. This is salicylic acid, a chemical product which being harmless, tasteless and odorless should be employed wherever we wish to guard against destructive influences exerted by air, fermentation, etc. While formerly all emulsions were made only in small amounts, just sufficient for several weeks' use, salicylic acid enables us to manufacture larger quantities at once and to keep them without much fear of their spoiling. However, even the presence of salicylic acid is no guarantee against deterioration if other precautions are neglected. The products should be kept in well-stoppered bottles or vessels, in a cool and dark place. All substances cannot be preserved by salicylic acid, and there are certain ferments or fungi which resist the action of salicylic acid. If chloroform is not objectionable in any of these preparations, and only so much is necessary as can be held in actual solution by the liquid, on an average three drops to the ounce, this preservative is preferable to salicylic acid. The only fats used in the preparation of emulsions are expressed oil of almonds, olive oil and lard. Almond oil is best made by immediate pressure of the bruised fruits, since fresh almond meal likewise finds application in perfumery. Olive oil and lard must be very carefully purified. This is done by heating them for one hour with about 10 times the quantity of water containing soap. 1% of the quantity of fat to be purified. They are then treated 5 or 6 times with pure warm water until the latter escapes quite neutral. If the water turns red litmus paper blue, it would indicate the presence of free alkali, soap. If it turns blue litmus paper red, it would prove the presence of free fatty acids, rancid fat. 
either one of these substances, especially the latter, would injure the quality of the product. The fat should be absolutely neutral and have no influence on either kind of litmus paper. Then its quality may be pronounced perfect. End of section 22. Section 23 of Perfumes and Their Preparation. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Kathleen. Perfumes and Their Preparation by George William Askinson. Chapter 21 Formulas for the Preparation of Emulsions, Meals, Pastes, Vegetable Milk, and Cold Creams a emulsions amandine almond cream melt ten pounds of purified lard in an enameled iron pot or a porcelain vessel and while increasing the temperature add little by little five pounds of potash lye of twenty five per cent strength stirring all the while with a broad spatula when fat and lye have become a uniform mass two and three fourths to three and one half ounces of alcohol is gradually added whereby the mixture acquires a translucence crystalline appearance before the alcohol is added three fourths to one ounce of oil of bitter almond is dissolved in it the soapy mass thus obtained is called almond cream creme de amandes and may be used alone for washing for making amandine take of expressed oil of almonds ten pounds almond cream three and one half ounces oil of bergamot one ounce oil of bitter almond one and one half ounces oil of lemon one hundred and fifty grains oil of clove one hundred and fifty grains oil of mace one hundred and fifty grains water one and three fourths ounces sugar three and one half ounces in the manufacture the following rules should be observed effect the mixture in a cool room the cellar in summer a fireless room in winter mix the ingredients in a shallow smooth vessel best a large porcelain dish using a very broad flat stirrer with several holes the sugar is first dissolved in the water and intimately mixed with the almond cream the essential oils are dissolved in the almond oil contained in a vessel provided with a stopcock the oil is first allowed to run into the dish in a moderate stream under continual stirring the mass soon grows more viscid and toward the end of the operation the flow of oil must be carefully restricted so that the quantity admitted can be at once completely mixed with the contents of the dish well-made amandine must be rather consistent and white and should not be translucent if translucency or an oily appearance is observed during the mixture the flow of oil must be at once checked or enough almond cream must be added to restore the white appearance under active stirring as amandine is very liable to decompose it must be immediately filled into the vessels in which it is to be kept and the latter closed air tight should be preserved in a cool place by adding three-fourths ounce of salicylic acid amandine may be made quite permanent so that it can be kept unchanged even in a warm place we have described the preparation of amandine at greater length because its manufacture requires some technical skill and because the preparation of all other cold creams corresponds in general with that of amandine glycerin emulsions a glycerin cream glycerin one half pound almond oil fourteen ounces rose water twelve and one half ounces spermaceti three and one half ounces wax four hundred and eighty grains oil of rose sixty grains melt the wax and spermaceti by gentle heat then add the almond oil next the glycerin mixed with the rose water and lastly the oil of rose which may also be replaced by some other fragrant oil or mixture if the preparation is to be used in summer it is advisable to increase the wax by one half thus giving the mass greater consistence b glycerin jelly 
glycerin two pounds almond oil six pounds soap five and one half ounces oil of orange peel one hundred and fifty grains oil of thyme three-fourths ounce mix the soap with the glycerin gradually add the oil as for amandine and finally the aromatics jasmine emulsion huel antique de jasmine two pounds almond cream five and one half ounces expressed oil of almond four pounds water five and one half ounces sugar two and three fourths ounces mix in the same order as given under amandine tuberose emulsion huel antique le tuberoses one and three fourths to two pounds almond cream five and one half ounces expressed oil of almond four pounds water five and one half ounces sugar two and three fourths ounces violet emulsion huel antique le violets two to three pounds almond cream five and one half ounces expressed oil of almond four pounds water five and one half ounces sugar two and three fourths ounces in place of the hills antiques named i e fine oils saturated with the odors of the corresponding flowers any other huel antique may be used and the cream then called by the name of the flower whose odor it possesses such creams with genuine huel's antiques are among the finest preparations known in perfumery and of course are high priced owing to the cost of the huel's antiques olivine gum acacia one half pound yolk of egg ten yolks olive oil four pounds soap seven ounces water eight ounces sugar five and one half ounces oil of bergamot two ounces oil of lemon two ounces oil of clove one ounce oil of orange peel three-fourth ounce oil of thyme seventy-five grains oil of cinnamon seventy-five grains the gum sugar water and yolk of eggs are first intimately mixed and gradually added to the olive oil containing the essential oils b meals and pastes the so-called meals farines and pastes pates really consist of the flour of fatty vegetable substances which possess the property of forming an emulsion with water and are frequently used in washes as they are free from alkali they are the most delicate preparations of the kind and are especially suitable for washing the face or sensitive hands simple almond paste pate de amandes simple bitter almond six pounds alcohol two quarts rose water four quarts oil of bergamot ten and one half ounces oil of lemon three and one half ounces put the bitter almonds in a sieve dip them for a few seconds in boiling water when they can be easily deprived of their brown skin carefully bruise them in a mortar and place them in a glazed pot set in another kept full with boiling water pour over them two quarts of the rose water heated to near the boiling point keep up the heat under continual stirring until the almond meal and rose water form a uniform mass free from granules in other words until the meal is changed into paste the pot is now allowed to cool somewhat when the rest of the rose water and the oils dissolved in alcohol are added almond paste should have a uniform butter-like consistence if the first part of the operation has been carefully performed almond and honey paste pate de almonds au meal bitter almonds two pounds yolk of egg thirty yolks honey four pounds expressed oil of almond four pounds oil of bergamot one ounce oil of lemon three-fourths ounce oil of clove three-fourths ounce decorticate and bruise the bitter almonds and add them with the essential oils to the mixed yolks honey and almond oil almond meal farine de almonds almond meal four pounds orris root powdered five and one half ounces oil of lemon one ounce oil of bitter almond one hundred and fifty grains oil of lemongrass seventy five grains almond meal here means the bran left after expressing the oil from sweet almonds 
first mix the powdered orris root intimately with the essential oils and triturate the mass with the almond bran other essential oils may also be used for perfuming the mass pistachio meal farine de pistaches pistachio nuts four pounds orris root powdered four pounds oil of lemon one and three-fourths ounces oil of neroli one hundred and fifty grains oil of orange peel one ounce the pistachio nuts are blanched in the same manner as almonds see under simple almond paste and then reduced to a meal c vegetable milk the several varieties of vegetable milk are merely emulsions containing sufficient water to give them a milky appearance they are used as such for washes and are in great favor owing to the larger amount of water they contain they are more liable to decompose than the preparations described above since the fats present in them easily become rancid on account of their fine division in the milk in order to render these preparations more stable they receive an addition of about five to ten per cent of their weight of pure glycerin which enhances their cosmetic effect the addition of about one half of one per cent to salicylic acid is likewise to be recommended as it makes them more stable in the following pages we shall describe only the most important of these preparations usually made by the perfumer in this connection we may state that by slightly modifying the substances used to perfume them new varieties of vegetable milk can be easily prepared every vegetable milk consists in the main of a base of soap wax and spermaceti and an aromatic water which gives the name to the preparation this composition is intended to keep suspended the fatty vegetable substances almond or pistachio meal and so forth thus producing a milky appearance vegetable milks are made as follows melt the soap with the wax and spermaceti at a gentle heat prepare a milk from the vegetable substance and the aromatic water e g unexpressed almonds and rose water by careful trituration strain it through the fine silk gauze into the vessel containing the melted mixture of soap wax and spermaceti stir thoroughly let it cool and add the alcohol holding in solution the essential oils the glycerin and the salicylic acid under continual stirring the alcohol must be added in a very thin stream otherwise a portion of the mass will curdle the coarser particles contained in the milk must be allowed to settle by leaving the preparation at rest for twenty-four hours when the milk can be carefully decanted from the sediment and filled into bottles for sale lilac milk lait de lilas soap two and one-fourth ounces wax two and one-fourth ounces spermaceti two and one-fourth ounces sweet almonds one pound lilac flower water four and one-half pints fuel antique de lilas two and one-half ounces alcohol eighty to eighty-five per cent thralls two pounds in place of lilac flower water and huel antique de lilas liacin terpineol may be used a sufficient quantity about one ounce being dissolved in the alcohol but the liacin must be pure and of clean odor virginal milk la virginal this preparation differs from all other milk sold in perfumery in that it consists of some aromatic water with tincture of benzoin and tolu in making it pour the aromatic water in a very thin stream into the tincture under vigorous stirring if the water flows in too rapidly the resins present in the tincture separate in lumps but if slowly poured in the resins form minute spheres which remain suspended the preparation is named after the aromatic water it contains la virginal de la rose aux fruits de oranges and so forth its formula is tincture of benzoin two ounces tincture of tolu two and three-fourths ounces aromatic water four quarts cucumber milk lait de concombres soap one ounce olive oil one ounce wax one ounce spermaceti one ounce sweet almonds one pound cucumber juice freshly expressed four and one half pints extract of cucumber one pint alcohol two pounds dandelion milk soap two and one fourth ounces olive oil two and one fourth ounces wax two and one fourth ounces sweet almonds one pound extract of tuberose one pound 
rose water five pints dandelion juice five ounces dandelion juice is the bitter milk sap of the root of the common dandelion leontodon taraxicum it should be expressed immediately before use the rose water may be replaced by some other aromatic water or even ordinary water but the latter should be distilled otherwise the lime it contains would form an insoluble combination with the soap bitter almond milk les de amandes amires bitter almonds two and one fourth ounces soap two and one fourth ounces expressed oil of almond two and one fourth ounces wax two and one fourth ounces spermaceti two and one fourth ounces rose water four quarts alcohol three pints oil of bitter almond one half ounce oil of bergamot one half ounce oil of lemon one half ounce rose milk lait de rosas olive oil two and one fourth ounces soap two and one fourth ounces wax two and one fourth ounces spermaceti two and one fourth ounces sweet almonds four pounds oil of rose one hundred and fifty grains rose water four quarts alcohol one pint pistachio milk lait de pistaches soap two and one fourth ounces olive oil two and one fourth ounces wax two and one fourth ounces spermaceti two and one fourth ounces pistachio nuts fourteen ounces oil of neroli three fourths ounce orange flower water six quarts alcohol one quart d cold creams and lip salves in the main they resemble in their composition the emulsions and vegetable milks but differ by their thick consistence which renders them suitable for being rubbed into the skin cold creams are really salves perfumed with one of the well-known odors which give them their names fat forms the basis of these mixtures and gives them their hygienic effect as it imparts fullness and softness to the skin every well-made cold cream should have the consistence of recently congealed wax and should yield to the pressure of the finger like pomatum it should be noted that the addition of very thick glycerin will increase the effect of the cold cream and improve its fine transparent appearance but this substance must be added with great care otherwise the mass will not possess the required firmness in making cold cream a mixture of wax spermaceti and expressed almond oil must be combined with an aromatic water and an essential oil the first part of the operation is easy the wax and spermaceti are melted at the lowest possible temperature and the almond oil is added under continual stirring it is more difficult to unite the other substances with this base the aromatic water is admitted in a thin stream under vigorous stirring or whipping or churning and when it forms a uniform mass with the contents of the mortar the remaining substances are stirred in and the still fluid mass is poured into the vessels intended for it and allowed to congeal cold creams are usually sold in tasteful porcelain jars or vases to guard against rancidity of the mass the vessels are closed either with ground stoppers or with corks covered with tin foil the essential oils should be added last when the mass has cooled to the congealing point if added before too much of them is lost by evaporation we give below several approved formulas for the preparation of some favorite cold creams and repeat that new varieties can be produced by introducing any desired odor into the composition glycerin cold cream a expressed oil of almond two pounds wax two and one half ounces spermaceti two and one half ounces glycerin seven ounces oil of bergamot three-fourths ounce oil of lemon three-fourths ounce oil of geranium three-fourths ounce oil of neroli one hundred and fifty grains oil of cinnamon one hundred and fifty grains rose water one pound glycerin cold cream b expressed oil of almond two pounds wax four and one half ounces spermaceti four and one half ounces glycerin one half pound oil of rose one hundred and fifty grains civet thirty grains camphor ice camphor cold cream wax two and one fourth ounces spermaceti two and one fourth ounces expressed oil of almond two pounds camphor four and one half ounces oil of rosemary 
ninety grains oil of peppermint forty five grains rose water two pounds camphor ice pate camphorique lard two pounds wax one half pound camphor one half pound oil of lavender one half ounce oil of rosemary one half ounce this mixture which is rather firm is frequently poured into shallow porcelain boxes sometimes it is colored red with alkanet root camphor balls savonettes camphoriques expressed oil of almond seven ounces purified tallow two pounds wax seven ounces spermaceti seven ounces camphor seven ounces oil of lavender three-fourths ounce oil of rosemary three-fourths ounce oil of cinnamon seventy-five grains savonette is generally understood to mean a soap cast in spherical moulds this preparation is as a rule likewise sold in this form divine pomade a expressed oil of almond three pounds spermaceti one pound lard two pounds benzoin one pound vanilla seven ounces civet three-fourths ounce the aromatic substances having been comminuted are thoroughly triturated with the other ingredients and the mass is kept for twenty-four hours at a temperature of fifty to sixty degrees celsius one hundred and twelve to one hundred and forty degrees fahrenheit when it is carefully decanted from the sediment which is treated again with another mass of the same substances for thirty-six to forty-eight hours divine pomade b beef marrow two pounds benzoin one and one half ounces nutmegs one ounce cloves one ounce storax one and one half ounces orris root one and one half ounces civet seventy five grains cinnamon one ounce orange flower water two pounds the solid substances are macerated for forty eight hours with the warm marrow the liquid perfumed marrow is then strained off and mixed with the orange flower water cologne cold cream creme de cologne expressed oil of almond two pounds wax two and one half ounces spermaceti two and a half ounces mecca balsam seven ounces tolu balsam three and one half ounces rose water fourteen ounces mecca balsam has been a rare article in commerce for many years that which is usually sold as such is more or less adulterated or an imitation the genuine was derived from balsamo dendron opo balsamum quinth cucumber cold cream a expressed oil of almond two pounds wax two and one fourth ounces spermaceti two and one fourth ounces extract of cucumber five and one half ounces cucumber juice fresh two pounds the cucumber juice is carefully heated to sixty or sixty five degrees celsius one hundred and forty to one hundred and forty nine degrees fahrenheit rapidly filtered from the curds and at once added to the rest of the mass cucumber cold cream b lard six pounds spermaceti two pounds benzoin seven ounces extract of cucumber two pounds the benzoin is first macerated with the warmed fat for twenty-four hours and this aromatic fat is treated in the usual manner lip salve a pomade blanche pour le lavres expressed oil of almond two pounds wax four and a half ounces spermaceti four and a half ounces oil of bitter almond one half ounce oil of lemon grass seventy five grains oil of rose seventy five grains red lip salve b pomade a la rose pour le lavres expressed oil of almond two pounds wax four and one half ounces spermaceti four and a half ounces oil of geranium a hundred and fifty grains oil of santal ninety grains alkanet root four and one half ounces the beautiful red color which distinguishes this preparation is produced with alkanet root the mass before the essential oils are added being macerated for from six to eight hours under frequent stirring with the comminuted root and then decanted from the sediment cherry salve c pomade cherise express oil of almond two pounds wax four and one half ounces spermaceti four and one half ounces oil of bitter almond one half ounce oil of sweet bay one hundred and fifty grains alkanet root four and one half ounces the procedure is the same as for pomade a la rose almond cold cream 
expressed oil of almond two pounds wax four and one half ounces spermaceti four and one half ounces rose water two pounds oil of bitter almond three fourths ounce civet thirty grains almond balls savonettes the almonds tallow two pounds wax ten and one half ounces spermaceti seven ounces oil of bitter almond one hundred and fifty grains oil of clove seventy five grains oil of cinnamon seventy five grains this is usually formed into balls rosebud cold cream almond oil two pounds wax two and one half ounces spermaceti two and one half ounces rose water two pounds oil of rose seventy five grains oil of geranium seventy five grains violet cold cream creme de violets huile antique de violets two pounds wax two and one half ounces spermaceti two and one half ounces violet water two pounds oil of bitter almond one hundred and fifty grains oil of neroli seventy five grains appendix nail powder poudre or ongles finger nagel pulver the finger nails being an appendage to the skin belong under the head of the care of the skin we therefore give a formula for preparing the powder used for imparting smoothness and gloss to the nails for use some of the powder is poured on a piece of soft glove leather and the nails are rubbed until they shine oxide of tin four pounds carmine three-fourths ounces oil of bergamot one hundred and fifty grains oil of lavender one hundred and fifty grains the oxide of tin must be an impalpable powder and is mixed with the other substances in a mortar end of section twenty three section twenty four of perfumes and their preparation this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by kathleen perfumes and their preparation by george william askinson chapter twenty two the preparations used for the care of the hair pomades and hair oils the hair the beautiful ornament of the human body requires fat for its care and preservation for there are but few persons whose scalp is so vigorous that the hair can derive sufficient nourishment from it to maintain its gloss and smoothness among the ancient greeks romans and germans various ointments were in use for the care of the hair in rome there was even as we have stated in an earlier part of the book a special guild of ointment makers or unguentari they employed a process for making their ointments fragrant which resembles that of maceration in present use the so-called pomades from pomum apple were prepared by sticking a fine apple full of spices and placing it for a long time in liquid fat which absorbed the odor of the spices in the present state of chemical science the basis of every pomade or hair oil is formed by some fat perfumed with aromatic substances and at times colored the fats generally used are lard beef marrow tallow bear's grease olive or almond oil some of the firmer fats receive an addition of a certain amount of paraffin spermaceti or wax in order to give the pomade greater consistence as in the manufacture of all the finer articles it is essential that whatever fat is employed should be perfectly pure only fat which is absolutely neutral i e free from acid can be used and any sample with but a trace of rancidity containing free fatty acids should be rejected on account of the penetrating odor peculiar to several of these acids manufacturers who aim at the production of fine goods spare neither trouble nor expense in order to obtain perfectly pure fats fats are purified for the purposes of the perfumer in the following manner the fat is melted in a bright iron pot or enameled vessel with three times the quantity of water containing in solution about one per cent of the weight of the fat of alum and one per cent of table salt fat and water are well stirred with a broad flat ladle or some mechanical arrangement within the boiler 
after the mass has remained at rest for some time the curdled solid matters are skimmed from the surface the time required for this operation can be much shortened by the use of a pump which raises the fat and water from the boiler and returns them in a fine spray when fats with some degree of rancidity are to be made suitable for the purposes of the perfumer zero point five per cent of caustic soda lye is added to the water instead of the alum after this treatment is completed the fat must be washed in order to free it from the substances with which it was purified formerly this washing was done in a manner resembling the grinding of oil colors the fat was placed on a level stone plate and kneaded with a muller with flat base under a continual stream of water flowing from above until the fat was clean this expensive hand labor is now performed by machines the fat being treated with water in vertical mills no matter how carefully a fat was purified it may happen that the pomades made from it if kept long in stock may subsequently become rancid a circumstance which may destroy the reputation of a factory fortunately we know two substances which materially counteract the tendency of fats to become rancid salicylic acid and benzoin either of these substances is added to many perfumery articles especially pomades in order to prevent rancidity an admixture of from one one thousandth to five one thousandths parts of solid salicylic acid suffices according to our experiments for the purpose of benzoin we need about three-fourths of an ounce for every quart of fat the resin is only partly soluble in fat but imparts to it its vanilla-like odor for the finest pomades sublimed benzoic acid is used in the proportion of about one hundred and fifty to two hundred and forty grains to the quart of fat end of section twenty four section twenty five of perfumes and their preparation this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by kathleen perfumes in their preparation by george william askinson chapter twenty three formulas for the manufacture of pomades and hair oils a pomades in manufacturing perfumery two groups of pomades are distinguished those with a hard base and those with a soft base by base is meant the fat which is the vehicle of the odor in every pomade the consistence of this substance depends upon its melting point lard and beef marrow having a low melting point furnish soft pomades while beef and mutton tallow which often receive an addition of paraffin wax or spermaceti in order to make them firmer have a higher melting point and serve for hard pomades french perfumers put on the market some very fine pomades consisting of the fat which has served for the absorption of odors by maceration in fleurage and so forth and which has been treated with alcohol for the extraction of the odors so-called washed pomades no matter how long such a fat is treated with alcohol it tenaciously retains a portion of the odor to which the great fragrance of these pomades is due and which has given them their reputation if the pomades resulting from the following formula should turn out too soft a fact depending on the climate of the place of manufacture they may receive an addition of a mixture of equal parts of paraffin wax and spermaceti in portions of respectively five per cent at each addition until the desired ointment-like consistence is attained cantharidal pomade beef marrow four pounds wax seven ounces oil of mace one hundred and fifty grains oil of clove a hundred and fifty grains oil of rose a hundred and fifty grains tincture of cantharides three-fourths ounce tincture of cantharides is prepared by prolonged maceration of three-fourth ounce of powdered cantharides in one quart of alcohol circassian pomade benzoid pomade see below two pounds 
rose pomade one pound lard two pounds expressed oil of almond four pounds alkanet root three and one half ounces oil of rose one half ounce the almond oil alone is first macerated with the alkanet root until when added to the other ingredients it imparts a beautiful red color to the pomade benzoin pomade a benzoic acid sublimed four and one-fourth ounces purified fat four pounds benzoin pomade b benzoin twelve and one-fourth ounces fat four pounds macerate the benzoin or benzoic acid in the fat at the temperature of boiling water for several hours and strain the pomade through a cloth double pomades these pomades are put on the market in excellent quality especially by french manufacturers they consist of a mixture of washed pomades and huiles antiques the respective quantities must be chosen according to the climate of the country for which the articles are intended colder countries require equal parts of weight of pomades and oils warmer climates two parts of fat to one of oil crystallized oil huile crystal lyce huile antique of orange flowers one pound huile antique of roses two pounds huile antique of tuberoses two pounds huile antique of violets two pounds spermaceti one pound paraffin seven ounces the addition of spermaceti and paraffin causes the mixture to assume a crystalline form on cooling the appearance improving in proportion as the cooling is slow and gradual first melt the paraffin and spermaceti on a water bath add the huiles antiques mix thoroughly by prolonged stirring and pour the finished product into the vessels in which it is to be sold these vessels are previously warmed to sixty or seventy degrees celsius one hundred forty to one hundred fifty eight degrees fahrenheit and very slowly after filling so as to secure a beautiful crystalline mass a second quality of crystalline hair oil is made according to the following formula expressed oil of almond ten pounds spermaceti twenty one ounces paraffin fourteen ounces oil of bergamot two ounces oil of lemon four and one fourth ounces oil of bitter almond one hundred and fifty grains blossom pomade pomade a fleurs expressed oil of almond four pounds jasmine pomade twenty eight ounces rose pomade twenty eight ounces violet pomade twenty eight ounces oil of bergamot one half ounce oil of lemon one hundred and fifty grains bear's grease pomade pomade a graisse d'ars expressed oil of almond twenty pounds lard twenty four pounds cassie pomade four pounds jasmine pomade four pounds huile antique of cassie one pound huile antique of jasmine one pound huile antique of orange flowers one pound huile antique of roses one pound huile antique of tuber roses one pound oil of bergamot one half pound oil of lemon three and one half ounces oil of nutmeg one and one half ounces oil of clove four and one fourth ounce this pomade is rather consistent if it is to be made still firmer for summer use or warm climates the almond oil should be diminished and the lard increased in proportion or some tallow and wax added the pomade is made by mixing the oil and lard adding next the pomades and huiles antiques and finally the essential oils the temperature should not be higher than suffices to keep the mass liquid the mixture is effected by vigorous stirring and is then at once though gradually cooled beef marrow pomade pomade a mole de boeuf lard eight pounds beef marrow four pounds oil of bergamot one ounce oil of lemon two ounces oil of mace one hundred and fifty grains oil of clove one hundred and fifty grains marrow cream cream de mole expressed oil of almond four pounds lard four pounds palm oil three and one half ounces oil of bergamot two ounces oil of lemon seven ounces oil of nutmeg one hundred and fifty grains oil of clove one hundred and fifty grains oil of cinnamon one hundred and fifty grains the public is accustomed to receive the last two pomades in the form of froth this can be easily effected by whipping the pomade during cooling with an egg beater until it is solidified cinchona pomade pomade a quinquine 
lard four pounds expressed oil of almond one pound beef marrow six pounds peru balsam one ounce cinchona bark three-fourths ounce oil of clove one ounce oil of rose a hundred and fifty grains macerate the finely powdered bark in the fat for some hours add the peru balsam strain through a cloth and incorporate the essential oils the pomade is vaunted as a hair tonic as well as tanno quinine pomade which is prepared in the same way the only difference being the addition of a hundred and fifty grains of tannin castor oil cream creme de racine expressed oil of almond three pounds castor oil three pounds rose pomade two pounds orange flower pomade two pounds tuberose pomade two pounds oil of bergamot seven ounces oil of lemon three and one half ounces orange flower pomade pomade of fleurs de oranges expressed oil of almond thirty eight and one half ounces cassie pomade thirty eight and one half ounces rose pomade thirty five ounces jasmine pomade thirty five ounces oil of bitter almond a hundred and fifty grains oil of diroli one half ounce heliotrope pomade pomade de heliotrope rose pomade four pounds orange flower pomade one pound fuel antique of jasmine two pounds fuel antique of orange flower one pound fuel antique of tuberose one pound vanilla pomade two pounds oil of bitter almond one hundred and fifty grains oil of clove seventy five grains transparent pomade expressed oil of almond six pounds wax five and one half ounces spermaceti one pound oil of bitter almond seventy five grains oil of rose one hundred and fifty grains tincture of musk one and one half ounces the pomade is completely liquefied after being mixed and allowed to congeal in the vessels in which it is marketed if successful the product must be quite transparent or at least decidedly translucent tonka cream tonka beans one pound lard eight pounds the powdered beans are stirred into the melted fat in which they remain for several days the fat being agitated from time to time when it smells strong enough it is strained through fine linen and the tonka beans are treated with another quantity of fat violet pomade pomade de violets lard four pounds cassie pomade three pounds rose pomade two pounds violet pomade two pounds vanilla cream creme de vanille vanilla seven ounces lard six pounds in making this pomade the material is treated the same as in preparing tonka pomade ordinary vanilla pomade is made by triturating peru balsam seven ounces lard two pounds expressed oil of almond two pounds first triturate the balsam with the almond oil and gradually add lard another much better process is the following vanilla pomade vanillin eighty grains peru balsam one half ounces lard six pounds dissolve the vanillin and balsam of peru in about four ounces of alcohol melt the lard at as low a temperature as possible then mix the solution stir until it is well incorporated and afterward repeatedly until the mass is cold pomade philocum huel antique of cassie one pound huel antique of jasmine one pound huel antique of orange flower three and a half ounces huel antique of rose three and a half ounces huel antique of tuberose three and a half ounces huel antique of violet one pound paraffin ten and one half ounces wax fourteen ounces this pomade has a delightful odor but is expensive an inferior and much cheaper philocum is made as follows expressed oil of almond eight pounds paraffin one half pounds wax fourteen ounces oil of bergamot four and a fourth ounces oil of lemon one and three-fourths ounces oil of lavender three-fourths ounces nutmeg seventy-five grains cloves seventy-five grains cinnamon seventy-five grains pomades are usually colored rose pomade red reseda pomade green violet pomade violet and so forth for this purpose aniline colors are frequently used they must be dissolved in glycerin and added to the fat as they are insoluble in the latter the coloring matter is added when the pomades are finished before they are allowed to congeal 
b hair oils these differ from pomades mainly by containing huiles antiques instead of washed pomades they are therefore more or less liquid and are used for the hair as much as pomades benzoated oil huil a benjamin sublimed benzoic acid five ounces expressed oil of almond four pounds the acid must be dissolved in the hot oil huil a l s bouquet oil of rose hundred and fifty grains oil of reseda three and a half ounces oil of violet one hundred and fifty grains tincture of musk seventy five grains almond oil six pounds the essential oils are mixed and the almond oil is added in small portions under continual stirring heliotrope hair oil huil heliotrope huil antique of jasmine ten and one half ounces huil antique of rose two pounds huil antique of orange flowers five and one half ounces huil antique of tuberose five and one half ounces huil antique of vanilla one pound oil of bitter almond a hundred and fifty grains oil of clove seventy five grains jasmine hair oil huil de jasmine expressed oil of almond four pounds huil antique of jasmine seven ounces oil of bergamot one ounce oil of lemon a hundred and fifty grains oil of swiss herbs expressed oil of almond four pounds oil of bergamot a hundred and fifty grains oil of lemon seventy five grains oil of lavender seventy five grains oil of peppermint a hundred and fifty grains oil of cinnamon seventy five grains oil of burdock root expressed oil of almond four pounds burdock root one pound oil of bergamot one ounce oil of lemon one ounce oil of rose three-fourths ounce the burdock root is macerated for two days in the warm oil which is then filtered and the other ingredients are added macassar oil expressed oil of almond four pounds alkanet root seven ounces oil of clove seventy five grains oil of mace seventy five grains oil of rose seventy five grains oil of cinnamon one half ounce tincture of musk seventy five grains the alkanet root in coarse powder must be macerated in the warm almond oil until it acquires a deep red color peru hair oil peru balsam three and a half ounces storax one and three fourths ounces express oil of almond eight pounds mix by stirring and allow to settle for two weeks in a completely filled bottle huil filicomb expressed oil of almond four pounds huil antique of cassie one pound huil antique of jasmine twenty eight ounces wax three and one half ounces spermaceti one and three fourths ounces oil of neroli one ounce oil of rose one hundred and fifty grains oil of cinnamon seventy five grains portugal oil expressed oil of almond four pounds oil of bergamot one ounce oil of lemon one hundred and fifty grains oil of neroli seventy five grains oil of orange flower seventy five grains oil of orange peel three-fourths ounce oil of cinnamon seventy five grains tonka oil tonka beans one pound expressed oil of almond four pounds enclose the powdered tonka beans in a linen bag which is hung into the cold oil and allowed to macerate for several weeks the same process is employed for the following vanilla oil vanilla seven ounces almond oil four pounds or vanillin eighty grains expressed oil of almond four pounds end of section twenty five